I've been fascinated by Robert Schumann ever since I was a child. His is such an interesting story. The young man training to be a lawyer, but at heart already a musician. The young pianist who foolishly invents a contraption to try and make uh, the action of his fingers more independent. Impossible, of course, and he injures himself fatally and that turns him more towards composition. Definitely our gain. The man for whom literature was so vitally important, as important pretty well as, as music was, and who had a huge knowledge of German literature, of German poetry, on which he could draw when he was setting his hundreds of songs, which are quite as important an output as was his solo piano music. The man who fights as far as in the law courts to win the woman he loves, Clara Wieck, who he has known since she was a small child and who becomes the great love and inspiration of his life. And finally, the man whose mental instability takes him over more and more and leads him to dying alone in the asylum at Endenich at the relatively young age of 46. But that is all the background. What I really love is the music, the sound and the emotion of the music. It is so passionate, so full of a mad life force. It is so haunting, it's so moving, it's so original. It is a huge challenge for any pianist to get one's head, one's heart and one's fingers around this music, but it gives us such a huge amount back. For this recording, which is my third recording for Shandos, I've chosen to make the journey between his first variations, Opus 1, and his very last variations, known as the Geister Variations, some 25 years later. They are completely contrasted. The Opus 1 Variations are virtuosic, charming, already very well skilled, com composition-wise. Very pianistic. The last variations are not pianistic at all. They're very inward-looking, rather strange, very haunting. Their history was that he wrote them at a time when his demons were really getting to him. He heard both good and bad voices, violent voices which would actually push him to throw himself into the Rhine and try and drown himself. He didn't, thank goodness for all of us, but he committed himself to the asylum at Endenich, where he was not allowed to compose and where he didn't see Clara or his children, except maybe once more before he died. It's really a tragic ending to an extraordinarily rich life. So for the intervening years between these two sets of variations, there was a lot to choose from, but I have chosen one of the major works, the Davis Bindler Tensor Opus 6, which is mad and joyous and beautiful that he wrote as a sort of wedding present for Clara, where there were, are 18 different characters who all jostle for attention. And also I've chosen two of the fascinating novelettes. I wish I could have chosen more, but I've chosen, I think, two of the best ones. I really hope you enjoy learning more about this music and above all listening to it. <laughs>